Today, I'm going to tell you about Marijn van den Berg, a Dutch rider who is moving to EF Education Nippo after spending a year at the FDJ development team. Marijn is a rider who deserves a lot more attention than what he's getting at the moment, and I feel like he's being overshadowed by the likes of a Mick Van Daker and some of the transfers going to Ineos, because he's basically going to be the best reduced bunch sprinter in a few years' time. He'll be out competing the likes of a Colbrelli, Sagan and Matthews in no time. Trust me, this guy's actually that good, especially in races like Romandy and Dauphiné where we saw a lot of reduced bunch sprints this year. And it's been clearly stated by Jonathan Vogters in the press release that accompanied Marlene's signing. Uh, Jonathan Vogters actually said that Marlene isn't limited to just being a sprinter he can win from a break or from a group of 40 and 50 riders. And he also went on to say that Marain has a really good TTT. And do you know which race in 2022 has reduced bun sprints and a team time trial? La Vuelta. So hopefully Marain can get sent to the Vuelta if he has some good results this season. I think that would be super cool that a Neo Pro would be able to go to a Grand Tour in his first year and even try and be quite competitive. I think that'll be really cool to see Marlene go to a Grand Tour straight away. His results were just amazing in 2021. You can look back at some of his previous results uh, from previous years on Pro Cycling Stats, but 2021 is the really standout year, really beating the likes of a Mick Van Daker, if you ask me, in terms of the quality of his results. He got two stages at the Tour de l'Avenir, one of which was from a reduced uphill sprint. One of them was just a flat sprint. So he's got the capability of winning both types of those. And he won the TTC as well, of course, with his team. Uh, but he also got both stages and the GC at the All and Nations Grand Prix, which is a race in Poland, which is like a national team race. And he also won the one day race to GP Adria Mobile, which is a kind of very rolling circuit and again an uphill sprint to the finish and even when he doesn't win you'll usually see that he's winning the sprint for like the, the first place in the second group and this is a good example is Parry Tours uh, Espoirs this year he finished in third place and you know that group only had about 20 riders and we know how tough Parry Tours can be in terms of the off-road terrain so he could actually be a really good one day racer and I believe that that's why he's going to be beating some of the punchers in the world like really soon you know I don't think he's quite he's not like an Alpha Leap who's like really light he's a really strong well built almost classics cobbled rider and the fact that he's so well rounded just means that he's so versatile he could go to so many races and I really hope that he goes to the likes of a Paris Nice or a Tour of Rome do next year so we can kind of get a gauge as to how well he's developing just because he's so versatile and he's also got quite a good individual time trial so perhaps going to a race with an individual time trial just so we can see how good he is in that as well and EF also have quite a good tendency to like have good TT equipment so a lot of their riders like Bissiger and Magnus Court Nielsen do quite well in time trials anyway so hopefully he gets to we get to see Marlene in some big races next year and competing with some of the big dogs and I want to give you a heads up so that you know you can be the person who knows about him before anybody else does and hopefully you are just as excited as I am to see Marlene in action in 2022 and that's all that I've got to say thank you very much for watching and we look forward to seeing Marlene out on the road so keep your masks on stay safe and I'll speak to you in the next video salut